Good morning, boys and girls, aunties and uncles who are listening to me this morning. I trust that we are all doing fine in these uh, COVID days. This morning, we are going to look at uh, a street woman, a story about a street woman who washed Christ's feet with her tears. And the story is recorded for us in the book of Luke, chapter 7, verses 36 to 50. Luke chapter 7, verses 36 to 50. And I'll, I'll read. It says, Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. <clears throat> now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, he would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, teacher, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you have rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. And those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this who even forgives sin. Then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. I will ask that we turn to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, we thank you once again for an opportunity such as this one, when we can come and learn from your word. We thank you, God, that these things are recorded for our uh, uh, teaching, our learning, so that our lives may conform to that of Christ. We pray, O oh God, that you may forgive us of our unrighteousness, that even as we learn from your word, both uh, hearer and teacher, that indeed we may stand as a people that are forgiven by you our God. We pray, O oh God, that even as we look through your word, that indeed at the end of the lesson, each one of us shall truly say that the Lord indeed has spoken to us. May you grant us the grace indeed to repent of our sins, to put our faith even in you. We pray asking all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Like I earlier said, boys and girls, this morning we are looking at a street woman who washed Christ's feet with her tears.
tears. We are calling her a street woman because it is believed that she conducted most of her business on the streets. We are going to see the type of business that she conducted, that she did, but it is believed that she did most of her, in fact, we must emphasize most of her dirty business on the streets, okay? We read from the Bible that actually this woman was immoral. She had bad manners, in other words. Okay, she never went to the synagogue. In other words, she was a woman who never prayed. She never worshipped God. She never went to church. Like I said earlier on, she conducted her dirty business on the streets. So this was a type of woman who, would, who loved money and would want to make money by any means. What specifically was she doing? It is believed that she was a prostitute, a person who sold her body for money. She was unrighteousness, she was immoral, and most people looked down on her, especially the Pharisees, the teachers of the law. They would not want to associate with her because of the kind of life that she led. <clears throat> the Bible tells us, when, when, when we read in Luke chapter 7, verse 36 to 50, that she must have heard that Jesus was, had actually gone to a, a Pharisee's house where he was invited to have dinner. And the name of the Pharisee we are taught in the Bible was Simon. And she must have heard that Jesus was there. And perhaps she had heard that this Jesus was a compassionate man. She must have heard stories that this Jesus was a forgiving man. So she found her way to Simon's house. And Simon must have been very surprised to see this person whom she knew to be an immoral person forcing herself into his house. <clears throat> so, this street woman found herself in Simon's house and she went straight to where Jesus was. And the Bible tells us that she began to weep. Obviously, she must have listened to Jesus even there. She must have observed very carefully that Jesus loved all, regardless of their status in life. Sinners, the rich, the poor, the rebellious, the prostitutes, Jesus loved them Oh, and she must have observed. And she went and knelt. I can assume. And began to weep. Her eyes were full of tears. And the Bible records clearly for us that she began to wipe Jesus' feet with her hair and she also began to kiss Jesus feet and this woman by the way when she went to Simon's house she carried with her the most expensive perfume the Bible tells us that she carried an alabaster jar of wine of or sorry of of perfume and that is the perfume that she used to wipe Jesus' feet after she kissed those feet. And that is a sign, boys and girls, of a person who had come to a realization that she had sinned before God and she needed to repent of her sins. She needed 
to be forgiven of her sins. She was weeping because she had come face to face with her, her sins. And she knew that if she died in her state as a prostitute, she was going to be sent to hell. Perhaps I can ask you this question, boys and girls. Have you come to terms with your sins? In other words, have you faced your sins face to face? Have you realized, have you seen that you are a sinner before this mighty God? Have you realized that if you died in your sins this morning, today, that God would actually send you to hell and you would be there forever and forever and forever. Have you, like this street woman, this prostitute, come to terms with the fact that God is not pleased with you as long as you are not a Christian? Well, this street woman went straight to Jesus. and wiped his feet with her hair. She kissed his feet and cleaned those feet with that expensive perfume that she had carried. Well, I must mention that that was an, out, an outward sign of repent, repentance. The, 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 the cleaning of the feet was an, of Jesus' feet using her hair was an outward sign of her repentance. What sign can we see from your life, boys and girls, that you have repented of your sins? Perhaps you claim to be born again. Perhaps you claim to be a Christian. What can we see outwardly? What can we point us at to see that indeed that one and this one has, has turned away from their sins? They have put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Or perhaps you just claim, but your life has never changed. You are still that little boy, that little girl who tells lies. Even after you have claimed to be a Christian, you are still that little girl, that little boy who bullies their friends, who takes things from their friends without permission. That is stealing, not so. Is there anything we can point at that now he claims he has repented, he has put his trust in the Lord Jesus, and we can clearly see that he has stopped stealing, he has stopped telling lies, he has changed, he's become born again. <clears throat> oh, you are like the Pharisee, who did not face up with his sin. The Bible tells us that when Simon the Pharisee saw what that woman was doing, touching Jesus' feet and cleaning those feet, he thought to himself, if this man, Jesus, were a prophet like he claims, he would not have allowed her to touch him. Boys and girls, that is a clear sign that Simon had self-righteousness. Simon had self-righteousness. He thought he was good inside and outside of himself. He thought he was standing right with God. 
And at this point, the Lord Jesus does not outrightly point, uh, show Simon his greediness, his unrighteousness, but instead tells him a story about a man who was owed money by two people. That one owed him 500 denarii and the other one 50. If it were in, a, in our day and age, we would have said one owed him 500 kwacha and the other one 50. And when this man who was owed money not uh, realized that these two debtors could, did not have the capacity to pay him back, he told them that their debts were cancelled. And he asked him the question, whom do you think loved him more? In other words, whom do you think was going to be very happy that the debt was cancelled? And Simon said, the one who had a bigger debt. And Jesus said, Simon, you have answered rightly. Him who has been forgiven more loves more. This woman had experienced the forgiveness of Christ. No wonder she shed tears. This woman had experienced true repentance. God had forgiven him, forgiven her of her sins. And she showed that appreciation by cleaning Jesus' feet with her tears, by kissing Jesus' feet, and by cleaning Jesus' feet with that expensive perfume that she had carried. How do we know then that Jesus had forgiven her of her sins? In Luke chapter 7 and verse 47, the Bible tells us, Therefore I say to you, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Verse 48, then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Boys and girls, we are talking about the Christ, this Jesus who is able to forgive us of our sins. You may say, no, but I've committed so many sins from the time I was young. Perhaps it's an elderly person who's saying, oh, the sins I've committed, I don't think God can forgive me. Verse 47 of Luke chapter 7 says, therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. And I would like to encourage us boys and girls that if we must experience, experience true forgiveness of our sins we must ask Jesus to forgive us because he is able when we go to him we see how that this street woman this immoral woman went straight to him. She did not hesitate. She did not waste time. And Jesus forgave her of her sins. And we can do the same as well. We can go to Christ anytime, anywhere. We can go to Christ and he will forgive us of our sins when we ask him to do so. In conclusion, boys and girls, have you been forgiven of your sins? Have you gone to Christ to ask for the forgiveness of your sins? If you have, what are the signs? What can we see the fruit of repentance in your life? Or you are like Simon the Pharisee who was self-righteous, who thought that he was good enough 
to be accepted by God, who didn't realize that actually he was a selfish person, a greedy person. Well, perhaps most of us may say, well, because I attend Sunday school, which is good. Or because my father is an elder, is a deacon, or because I sing in Sunday school, therefore God has accepted me. No. We are only accepted on the basis of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 7 verse 50, then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you, go in peace. Your faith has saved you, go in peace. Have you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you trust that this Jesus can forgive you of your sins? I pray and trust that even this day, if you have not put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that God himself will give you that gift of faith and that you shall trust in him like this street woman and that you shall repent of your sins and that he shall say to you, peace. Jesus said to the woman, go in peace. And if you repent of your sins, indeed, you shall also experience this peace that Christ only gives. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you once again for your words. We pray that indeed these things that we have read from the Bible, that they may stay permanently in our hearts. We have seen an example of an immoral woman, one that sold her body for money, that when she came to you, you forgave her of her sins. And indeed, you forgave her of her many sins like we read in the Bible. And we pray, O oh God, that even this morning you may forgive us of our many sins. The sins we committed years gone, gone by, yesterday, and even this morning. For our friends who are not believers, may you grant them the gift of faith that indeed they may also experience true repentance, true salvation, and that peace may be upon them. The peace that comes from above. We pray asking all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Of a promise made of glory, joy, and bliss.